All right, so this is the first video on a series with bending stress and moment of inertia. And this is kind of the most basic as it gets. All right, so we have two shapes, and with these two shapes, we're told to first find the moment of inertia about the principal xx axis. So that's this middle line axis that passes right through kind of the center of gravity of this thing. So if, this, if you can picture, you know, where the center of gravity of this thing is, that principal axis is going to pass right through there. So what we want to do is find the moment of inertia um, and the maximum bending stress if the section resists a bending moment of you know 10 kilonewton meters. Uh, okay, so our general formula for bending stress is bending stress equal to moment times c, and, and we'll get to this, but this is the, the distance that's farthest from the neutral axis that's in tension or compression. So, you know, distance, the farthest from neutral axis. And I'll put neutral axis as NA, right? The neutral axis is this, you know, principal XX axis here. This is the neutral axis for the bending there. So that's what we're gonna start with. I, again, is the moment of inertia, and that's why we need it, is so that we can find the bending stress. And obviously, um, in this question, M is the moment. So I is the moment of inertia, and we'll write it down here, but M, right, is the moment. And we need two other formulas here, the moment of inertia of these basic shapes. So we have a circle, right? Here's our circle, and here's our rectangle. And our rectangle has, you know, a base B and a height H. You know, our circle has a, has a diameter D. So I'll just write those in here. But for the moment of inertia of a circle, Ix equals pi times D to the fourth over 64. And for the rectangle, we have Ix equals BH cubed over 12. Okay, so this is always the base, the bottom part that's, you know, um, parallel to the, the neutral axis, the dimension parallel to the neutral axis, times the dimension that's, you know, perpendicular to the neutral axis cubed, all over 12. So that's our, those are our two formulas. And right now, all we have to do now is, is come and plug and chuck. So this is cool. We have our numbers, and if you want to use this as a test, see if you get the same thing, you know, pause the video, try and plug these in, and see if you get it. But I'll write them out here. Um, so for the circle, we have, Ix equals you know pi times our, our diameter of 100 millimeters to the fourth all over uh, 64. And, and you might be wondering, well, this isn't solid. And you're absolutely right. So in this case, if it's not solid, we have to subtract off right the inside. So we're going to do pi times. Well, the inside, the diameter is this. This is tricky sometimes, but it's 100 minus the thickness of eight. Minus the thickness of eight again, so it's twice the thickness. So a hundred, you know, millimeters minus two times the thickness, or two times eight millimeters. And what are we going to get there? You know, it's going to be. Um, this is going to work out to 84. Well, when we do that out, right, we get um, a value of something really big. It's two four six four eight one eight millimeters to the fourth. So that's a lot of millimeters. And I'm just gonna label this because we're working on the circle now. Okay, so once we have that, that's good, right? The next thing that we need, right, to finish our, our bending stress formula here is this value C. And, and for a circle, the C is the distance that's farthest from the neutral axis. And hopefully you can see this, but that distance C here is just gonna be the distance farthest from the neutral axis, which is just gonna end up really being the radius. So C equals R in a circle. So um, for this circle, we have, you know, 100 millimeters divided by two equals 50 millimeters. And then we can solve for our bending stress, right? So our bending stress is going to be mc over i, this formula over here. So our moment is uh, 10 kilonewton meters, and I'm going to want to convert everything here so that I get MPA in the end. And to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply by 1,000 newtons per kilonewton and multiply by 1,000 millimeters per meter all over, you know, uh, what do we have here for a moment of inertia? This big long number, 246. 4818 millimeters to the fourth. And you might be wondering where C ended up. This is all just a moment. And C, we still have to, we can't forget about C, 50 millimeters. Okay, so that's our big long equation. And the thing that I like to do is I like to get it all into Newton's meters if possible, because I know one MPA equals, you know, one Newton per millimeter squared. So let's see if that's what we end up with. We, we cross out our kilonewtons, we cross out our meters. Uh, so we're end, ending up with a newton and millimeter on the top, millimeter times millimeter, oops, I forgot my parentheses, is a millimeter times millimeters, millimeter squared, divided by millimeters to the fourth. So we get a newton per millimeter to the, you know, a newton per millimeter squared, which is gonna equal an MPA. And when we do this out, uh, we get 200, about 203 MPA, okay? And that's really, that's it, right? So all we had to do here was we had to go in, plug in, 
our formula for our circle, uh, find C, you know, substitute in, make sure we get our conversions correct, and we end up with 203 megapascals. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm just gonna delete this out, and we're gonna do the same thing for the rectangle. So let's do that. All right, for, so for the rectangle, what we're gonna do is we are gonna basically do the same thing. We're gonna first find our moment of inertia, which is just gonna be IX, which is, you know, in this case, I'm just gonna write this out. It's gonna be BH cubed over 12, and this is like for the outside, you know, outside, um, minus BH cubed, right, over 12 for the inside. So we're gonna subtract off all the area that's on the inside of this thing to get the total moment of inertia. So we can plug the numbers in. So our base is 100 millimeters, our height is, you know, 120 millimeters, that gets cubed all over 12, and that's the outside moment of inertia, right? And then we wanna subtract off, you know, this inside moment of inertia, or this inside section here, uh, to get our total moment of inertia for the actual section, the blue section here. So let's do that, and we'll subtract. Now we need to know what our B is. So B in this case, again, if we have a thickness of 15, our 100 millimeters needs to be subtracted by 15 on one side and 15 on the other. So 15 and 15 is 30, and I'll just write it like this. Our base is 100 millimeters you know, minus two times 15 millimeters, and our height is gonna be similar. It's gonna be 120 millimeters minus two times eight millimeters, because we have two times the thickness here. You know, two times the thickness here. We have to cube all that, divide it by 12, the big long equation, and hopefully your calculator skills work. If not, you know, try them out, see, see how you do. So what I get here is 7.38293 millimeters to the fourth. And so we have, you know, we're coming back to our bending stress formula. We have uh, I, we need to look at C. So when we find the distance for the, you know, from the neutral axis for the rectangle, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this distance and go, you know, straight up. This is anywhere perpendicular to the neutral axis. This distance is going to be our distance C, which is just gonna equal essentially the height, the total height over two. So C is gonna equal 120 millimeters over two, which is gonna be 60 millimeters. I'll write that down here as well, but we have C equals the height, which is 120 millimeters, divided by two, which is 60 millimeters. And then we can just plug into our last equation here. So I'll move this up a little bit so that we have a little bit of room. But the bending stress is just gonna equal you know, M, which is 10 kilonewton meters. And again, now I'm just gonna multiply this by 1,000 uh, newtons per kilonewton, and 1,000 millimeters per meter. That's our moment, times our C, which is 60 millimeters. Divide it all by our moment of inertia, which is 7838293 millimeters to the fourth. And when we do this, when we solve for it, we're gonna get about 76 and a half megapascals. So there you have it, right? Basically all we did is we took our basic uh, bending stress formula, we applied that by first finding the moment of inertia, then finding C, the distance from the neutral axis to the farthest uh, point that's in stress, and then we just plugged and chugged, right? So hopefully that makes sense, and if you have a problem like this, one of the hard things might be getting this moment, this moment, and this problem was given to you, but you might have to go through a shear moment diagram. So feel free to check out you know, how to do that, but otherwise, it's making sure you know how to use your calculator, getting the right conversions, and putting it all in. So hope this helps, and if you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment. Otherwise, keep working hard and moving onward and then upward.